Visual or optical illusions are a commonly encountered phenomenon. For instance, consider illusions of light. Place one sheet of paper slightly over another, thereby casting a shadow. Now, what has happened to the color of the paper? It appears to be darker. However, the color of the paper hasn't changed. This shadow technique is creating what's known as mock bands. Cool, huh? Well, let's dive into visual illusions and the brain. But before I do, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more about that thing in your head. Not the brain worms everyone who disagrees with you on Twitter are convinced has infected your mind, but the actual organ itself, the brain. Truthfully, a lot of things we see can trick us, especially 2D images. And some of these tricks or illusions take place before the visual stimulus reaches the brain. Yeah, you heard me. We're tricked before our brains even know it. This is because the mechanisms that allow us to understand visual information do a lot of the processing before the visual content reaches our dedicated area of the brain for vision, the occipital lobe. Anyways, in order to understand how the stuff out there can trick the thing in here, we need to enter the world of psychophysics, which is the combination of physics and psych brain stuff. Don't be intimidated, I will be here the entire time. Okay, let's start with where vision begins, the eye. Light reflects away from objects and enters the eye via the pupil. The object comes into focus by the cornea and lens in order to project the image onto the retina. The retina contains two receptor cells for vision rods, and cones. These receptors are dedicated to specific aspects of vision. The cones are responsible for our perception of color, while the rods are responsible for our perception of movement. Light is transferred into electricity by these receptors, a process called transduction. Once the image is essentially transformed into an electrical signal, the signal leaves the eye via the optic nerve. Before I leave the eye, myself, I want you to get a sheet of paper, a ruler, a pen, and a pencil. Create a cross somewhere near the middle of your paper. Paper. About two inches to the left, draw a circle and fill in the circle completely. Keep your sheet of paper on a flat surface and cover your right eye. Focus on the cross and note the circle in your periphery. Move your face closer to the cross and at some point you'll see the circle disappear. Did you see it disappear? This is what's called a blind spot in our vision. The blind spot in our eyes is due to missing receptors where the optic nerve is located in our retinas. We don't normally notice this because our brain often fills in missing information using clues from our environment, creating an illusion of visual continuity or consistency, which is really awesome. <laughs> Returning to our image that is being transduced, before this signal makes its way to its final destination within our brains, it finds additional lanes in which to travel. The signal transfers from the rods and cones, converging or synapsing from one receptor to another in order to send the signal across the retina or to the brain. Thus, the signal goes from the rods and cones to bipolar cells then to ganglion cells. From there, ganglion cells transfer the signal out of the retina to the optic nerve where our blind spot is located. Alternatively, horizontal and amacrine cells transfer the signal across the retina and not to the brain. I bring this up for a reason. Do you remember what I did at the beginning of this episode? With the piece of paper and the shadow it was casting onto another sheet of paper, thereby creating a color differential? Of course you do. You're not a goldfish. Well, goldfish actually have okay memories. The important thing is, is that you, no one's a goldfish. But if you are a goldfish, I mean no offense. You know what, let me just start over. A shadow cast from one sheet of paper onto another piece of paper of the same color makes the bottom sheet of paper appear to be a different or darker shade of white. While the color hasn't changed, the eye perceives it as a darker color. This phenomenon is best explained by lateral inhibition, which is inhibition transferred across the retina. You see, when neurons are excitatory, they release neurotransmitters onto their neighboring neurons in order to get an increased response from their synapsing neurons. In contrast, when they're inhibitory, they release neurotransmitters that inhibit the response of neighboring neurons. So, lateral inhibition is about neurons that are inhibiting other neurons across the retina, thereby diminishing or tampering down their responses. And this accounts for the mock band illusion. Interestingly, this response can be mathematically calculated and then graphed. I won't subject you to that, but do know that the light intensity, perception of brightness, and the neuronal responses can be plotted on a graph that look very similar, if not identical to each other. It's a fascinating phenomenon, and both mock bands and our visual blind spot are the result of cells, or lack thereof, 
within our retinas. When a signal, the electrical information that represents our image, leaves the retina, it travels down the optic nerve to the optic chasm, where the information is then projected to the left optic tract and to the right optic tract. A small number of axons of the optic tract form connections among cells within the hypothalamus. However, the majority of axons project or send information from the optic tract to the lateral geniculate nucleus, or LGN, located in the thalamus. Axons from the LGN project to the primary visual cortex, the dedicated cortical area within the brain devoted to vision. Now that we've made it to the brain, see, I told you we'd make it through psychophysics. Let's turn our attention to an illusion that may arise from the brain. For this illusion, you'll need a cup, a pair of scissors, a thing to write with, paper, and a surface that is not the same color as your sheet of paper. Take the cup to create four circles and cut out the circles. Next, cut 90 degree wedges within your circles and place your circles onto your contrasting color surface where the wedges are facing the middle point of where you place the circles. Do you notice the square that emerges from this pattern? As you can see, there are no lines completing the square. This phenomenon is called illusory contours. We perceive the borders where borders don't actually exist. This may be due to the brain filling in missing information based on feedback from additional cortical areas. This feedback from additional cortical areas may also be responsible for various other illusions, even illusions containing movement. Supporting the concept of integration of other cortical areas used to interpret visual stimuli, for the next illusion, you will need two copies of the same photo of yourself. Cut out the eyes of one of your photos and place the eyes upside down onto the intact photo. Now, turn your photo upside down. While the photo looks a bit off, it does not look as jarring as when you turn the photo back to its original position. This phenomenon may be due to perceptual learning, which are changes to the brain that alter how sensory information is processed. This kind of learning results in perceptual habits, which are thoroughly learned patterns of how things in our environments are organized and where we direct our attention. Returning to our image, when upside down, the distortion appears to be minor, but when reoriented to face us in its upright position, it looks horrifying. This may be due to the fact that we aren't accustomed to seeing and processing faces when they're upside down. We therefore haven't developed an expected pattern of what an upside down face should actually look like. There may be more illusions that may be the result of top-down perceptual learning or bottom-up, such as cellular inhibition processes. Illusions highlight the fact that our visual system is limited or restricted. After all, the visual system is simply interpreting a reality that has assured our survival, but not actual reality. And these illusions draw into focus the limitations of how reality is interpreted by our visual system. If you liked what you saw, subscribe to our channel and share with family and friends. Also, give this video a thumbs up. Also, also, head on over to my Patreon page where you can find perks for my members. As always, thank you for watching.